Hello, everyone. Welcome to John Fields Cafe. My name is Dennis, and welcome to another episode of this sixth season. Thank you so much for joining us. As usual, I invite you to go check out the Facebook, YouTube, Instagram pages of John Fields Cafe. Do some likes, and of course, to subscribe to those pages. Also, I invite you to go check out drumfieldscafe.com, the website, to know all about the past seasons and, of course, what's going on with this sixth season. Tonight, uh, very excited. Someone I passed by and looked at their display at the Drum Fest had some very wacky designs. My guest tonight is the creator of Headhunters Sticks and Creation. Since about 95, he's located in Burlington, Ontario, Greater Toronto Area. And Headhunters basically design, produce, and sell via an international network of distributors and dealers located in Canada, the UK, and the USA, just to name a few places. He has a roster of artists such as Jim Keltner, Billy Ward, and Graham Lear, just to name a few. And basically, he's just a nice Canadian creating some very beautiful, wacky designs that I think you should really check out. So without further ado, welcome to the show, Mr. Dave Rundle. Nice intro. Thank you Appreciate so much. <laughs> so, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Good, good. So I can see you basically in the headquarters right now. Yes, I am. I'm upstairs where we make the brushes. Uh, it's a little neater up here and a little quieter. So I thought <laughs> this would be a good place to sit down and show you some stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, so am I just correct? So Hendrickers has started since 95. Is that correct? It's, it was a little earlier than that. I acquired uh, the uh, lathe and some equipment from uh, Power Tip and all the knives. And uh, in 95, I changed the name to Headhunters. And uh, a lot of the designs that you see in the Headhunters with the grooves, these were originally designed in the 1960s. So it's been in Canada for an awful long time. Okay, so it's it's yeah. been a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I was wondering yeah. about that because uh, I, we saw, like you were discussing, I think it's Power Tip used to be that company before, right? Uh, yeah. It, okay. it was uh, <clears throat> the same designs, like I okay. say. And then, uh, yeah. So those designs were originally designed in the 60s by uh, John Kirkwood, who was a pipe band drummer. Oh, okay. So he took his knowledge from pipe band. If you look at the the headhunters models uh the tapers are really radical they're really long mm. like a pipe band except the beads are all tapered down sound great on cymbals and um this is what where he got his knowledge from was the pipe band okay genre and okay. he applied that to making drumsticks for the, for the kit for drummers at the time okay and then he passed he passed on and then a lot of other drum companies started copying those models and those designs. <clears throat> More there's Power Tip, Dynatip, Rimshot. Okay. There's several companies that copy those designs, and we've been around now for twenty over twenty five years. Very cool. Carrying are on you, that tradition. Are are you the are you the main creator of of Headhunters? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so, and question, you, I think you've explained this maybe at this display, but where does Headhunters come from? Where does that name come from? Um, I kind of thought it evoked um, a, a primitive idea with the logo, the man throwing the spear. I wanted uh, something very basic and the double entendre of, Drummers, the drum head, hunting. Right. And, right. Um, <laughs> so uh, a guy I know, he designed the logo of the man throwing the spear. And um, if you look closely at the font, they're actually bones. Oh, cool. Okay. 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 Yeah, okay. So, so the whole primitive idea is, I think, important. And it just shows the drums and drumming have been around for so long. It's changed right. over the years, but. It's been in the human family for probably thousands and thousands of years, right? <laughs> you probably drum before we even talked, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
Cool. Um, and you're located in, in Burlington. Is there a reason for being located on that area or it's just sort of, sort of happened that way? Yeah, I lived in the, I used to live downtown Toronto. And then <clears throat> while I was a coast sales rep, I was a sales rep for about 25 years. Okay. And um, my territory w- was central to this area. So I thought it saved me on the driving. So I moved out, moved into the country. So we've been out this way and since. Nineteen nine, no, ninety-eight. Okay, okay and, cool. Yeah, and then uh, uh, headhunters was always in the background. I I didn't put it on the front burner until about two thousand fifteen. Okay, so it's sort of yeah. recent that uh, it's 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 your main thing, is what you're saying. Yeah, it's my main thing now. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, I imagine you don't want to go through that whole Toronto traffic every day. <laughs> no, not at all. Uh-uh. I've, been, have I've been through it a couple of times, and I thought Montreal traffic was bad, but it's, oh, it's, not, it's getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse. <clears throat> well, I saw a lot of the designs. The main one I can imagine that people recognize, of course, is the sticks, the ones with yeah. the, the the groove. So, could you yeah. could you uh, I guess show and tell or explain a bit the idea behind all of that? Yeah. Well, essentially, there's uh, four different profiles in the Maple model. And uh, what we've done is we've taken, I don't know, can you see that? Yep. Is that, is that frontwards or backwards? You never know when you're, when you're showing something <laughs> like this. Does things. this come out I, reading I properly? Yes, it's not. I, okay. I can see the hunters. You're good. So, okay. <laughs> so the, on the Maple models, we use a yellow sleeve. And on the hickory models, we use the reverse. Okay. So when I when a drummer goes in the store and he's wondering, oh, what's the difference? This is hickory, that's maple. Okay. And so these are both the same. Oh no, they're not the same. These these two are the same models. So this is um, a C model okay. in maple, and this is a C model in hickory. In hickory, okay. So the profiles, uh, there's an A profile, and then a B profile, a C profile, and an L profile. And then you have a double L, or uh, a double L and a triple L. So the difference would be the diameter. Okay. So, so that's as, the same throughout as, the, whole mo- uh, okay. the whole model system. So as you and go those up are in our the- groove, groove Sorry. Model. Sorry. I was just going to say, as you go up in letters, the it's the it's a fatter stick, if you will. Fatter stick, yeah. Thank Bigger you. diameter, and then but we do classics too. So we have a maple classic series, and we have a hickory classic series, and then we have uh, a grip as well. You can go over top. Does the does the maple? I mean, the maple I, hickory more definition. Maple is kind of a softer stick. The, what's the, really the difference between the, the or does not really? What drummers, it's more. What drummers will often say is they find maple warmer sounding oh, okay. on their cymbals. Right. It's a little lighter. Um, longevity. So, oh, right. Well, people will say maple doesn't last as long as hickory. Okay. Hickory is more dense. And if you were to compare it to, sorry, that's my compressor. <laughs> Hello, compressor. We'll, we'll find out if. Uh, Yeah, I turned the compressor on in case you wanted to see any any equipment running or anything like that. It'll it'll shut off in a second. Okay. It's pretty loud. Uh, it's okay. I can still hear you. At least it's not cracking. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not um. So uh, you'll have to tell me what I was saying. <laughs> We're talking about the difference of of the 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 stick from the maple to the hickory. Oh yeah, maple. Yeah. So if you were to compare it to like uh, vegetables. A maple mm. is like a carrot. So like if you take a, a carrot, you could snap it, right? you know, and a hickory is more like celery mm. with, the, with the fibers running through it. So if you were to break a piece of celery and you look at, you know, how it's stringy in that, that's kind of a way to describe the different, uh, how the sticks would last I see. In, in a sense. But I, I, I say that just as the, a, a way to describe them that people can relate to. But at the same time, you've got a lot of heavy hitters and really great players that use maple, and they swear right. by it. So, right, right, right. so it's just a personal choice. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. 
And you were saying that uh, they come with grips. Uh, so it's Yeah, they only... come with a grip. So like a grip, uh, here's, a, here's a classic model. Here's a 5B classic with um, a grip. Can you see that okay? Yep, I can see the sort so, of the... So it's a, du a double textured grip. Okay. So it's, um, it's glued and shrunk on. And um, we used to use dips years ago. And um, I, what I always found about the grips, the dip, is it would wear out at the fulcrum area before the stick was done. So here you, you're, you've, you've paid your money for your drumstick and you've worn the grip off and you're looking at the rest of the stick knowing you could have played it for another month or something, right? <laughs> but you're getting blisters from the grip. So like right. uh, we just stopped dipping and went to this grip system and uh, drummers love it. So we have two different types of grip. We have uh, this standard uh, black X grip, which we call a BX grip. And then okay. we have one called an RX. And the RX, um, actually I'll show you the RX. Sure. Just a sec. No problem. Looks killer. So mm -hmm. the the RX. This is this is a five BS drumstick, a classic. And um, you can see that it's really a, a more aggressive grip. Right. Where the red's actually raised up above the yeah, profile. I was about to say. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how a lot of drum corps guys used to tape their drumsticks. Well, mm -hmm. a lot of drummers tape their drumsticks. This kind of, you know, this is in that genre of idea where you're, you're really getting aggressive grip. So if I, if you're a guy that drops sticks and you really need an aggressive grip, this is fantastic. <laughs> I, I, I should try those because for me, it's not uh, wet hands, but dry hands. Dry hands, okay. Yeah, so, so yeah I, have, I, have the other, <laughs> I have the other problem for some reason. And oh, I've tried... I've tried what you're saying, those dips, and eventually, yes, at a gig, they do eventually chew away at uh, at your uh, at yeah, your skin. And it, things. Yeah, yeah, and you get a blister here. That's not so, good news for a drummer, a blister. <laughs> no, no, I, I thought it was good news back in the day, but uh, my prof said you're not holding the stick properly. But but that's interesting. <laughs> I, I'd love to try those uh, compared to the dips. That's interesting. So that's the classic sort of sticks that you make. Uh, that the classic yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So there's like. There's a maple classic, there's hickory classic, then there's the maple grooves and the hickory grooves. So, it's so pretty the, simple. The grooves are the ones with the, the big uh, circles, if you will. Uh, yeah, they've got grooves in the handle. And there's uh, there's one model that we do that uh, has more aggressive grooves. Like this, these are the grooves. Right. And then we have one that has a more aggressive groove as well. And that's to help sort of that that fulcrum part, if you will, that fulcrum uh, spot, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah, it helps you identify where it is, and it feels it, it kind of disappears in your hand. Mm. A lot of people, when they first pick it up, they go, oh, "I don't know about these grooves." Then they start playing, and you don't notice it anymore. It's just mm. enhancing your, your. It's making it easier to hold onto the stick, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So and, yeah. and it disappears like it's like anything as soon as you start playing. You're not so much concentrating on I'm hitting the stick, I'm hitting, I'm doing this. You mm -hmm. start listening to what you're playing, and your sticks just become an extension of you. This is of you, yeah, not interesting. You know, no, so it's, it's... basically, those grooves in my mind disappear. Right, 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 and, it, and that's what basically the people say to you. I imagine uh, whenever they try it. Um, you've also, uh, besides the stick, uh, you also have the creation stuff. Uh, which is a very big part of what you do. Yeah, it's a, it's the big part. Like it's the big part of the. Yeah, you know, I've got a lot of opinions about that, but one of the main things is, I, I we're acoustic driven company. Everything okay. that we do is to enhance the drum set, enhance cymbals, and the acoustic properties of a drum set, and that that has really a lot of value. For the drum industry, for retailers, for drum magazines, for everybody, because, like, it's not that I don't like electronic drum sets, believe me, I think they're amazing, but they they don't drive the industry. Mm. They like 
you have an electronic drum set, how many ads do you think they need to put in a drum mechanism? A couple. But you take a look at all the, the cymbal companies and the stick companies and the drum head companies and everybody, that's supporting the industry way more than electronic mm. drum set. Mm. I've, I've probably crossed over. And said no, no, something, not really, you know, but, but, but it's true because you, you don't need, and we're going to talk about this with the, all the creation stuff you have because it's yeah. really interesting. Um, you know, an electronic drum set is a trigger, so you don't need. You, you, don't, don't you need, need a you need a pair of drumsticks for a year. Yeah, and you and don't need a, a triple B to hit whatever. You just need something that's going to hit the trigger, trigger, and that's it. Trigger it, and that's it. Yeah, job's done, sort of thing. And, and they're they're fabulous. Like they, what you can do with them is really amazing. But mm. you know, we're like I said, we're I like to call think of ourselves as an acoustically driven company. Right, right, and, and you know to help pants any any drum line, it doesn't matter what drum brand it is, it doesn't matter what symbol it is, it doesn't matter what drum head it is. We should be friends with every company <laughs> out there because we're <laughs> helping to support what they do. That's true, and That's making true. them more interested, giving the drummer way more options of what That's they true. can do on a drum set. Again, mm. way more sounds. But you know, some stuff is duplicated, mm. but uh, it's like drumsticks. You know, there's a 5A, there's a, a 7A, there's a 5B, there's a fusion, there's rock, there's all these different types of things. But if you look at it, the essence of it, it's a cylindrical piece of wood with some kind of a taper and a bead. So mm. why do we have to have so many of them? We have thousands of drumstick models. Mm. So I, up until, I'd say, 20 years ago, there's only one bundled rod. Right, right. And nobody and and nobody was using it. Like, I I knew Maury Broxton, and he told me a great that that's who the original. He's the uh, Herb Broxton started Power Jet or um, Promart. Maury took over, and Maury told me a story about hot rods. That okay. when he came, the guy who invented the hot rod came to, he tried to sell it to Vic and everybody, right? And Maury said, okay, we'll do it. We'll try it. He started selling them in 1984. And it wasn't until 1989 that um, Dave Kroll used them in um, the Nirvana. Nirvana. Yeah. Yes. yeah, the acoustic yes. band. And then yes. someone asked him in Rolling Stone magazine, hey, what were you using? And he said, oh, there are these things called hot rods. Bam. They started selling. But yeah, if that's... you go back to 1989, that was the only one. And there was only one for years and years. Hmm. So I, I started thinking about it. And like the hot rod was great. But I mean, most drummers know they break. Like the dowels <laughs> are skinny dowels. So you're talking about a one eighth inch dowel yeah, that you're yeah. hitting. And yeah. it, it really doesn't have tremendous bounce. So when you get down to your lower dynamics and you're trying to play double stroke rolls, and stay quiet, which is the whole concept of what those are all about. Most drummers will, if they're trying to play a double stroke roll, the next thing you know, they're playing a little louder and then a little louder, and they go beyond its natural dynamic range. Right. And that's where the trouble begins. You can start breaking. Oh, sorry. You start, you start breaking product. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's why I came up with the, uh, the foam core one. That, that was one of my first designs. Okay, that, that is very and I have it right. I happen to have it right here. Go ahead. <laughs> so this this was uh, th when I came up with this design. It's uh, was about two thousand and four, okay. and I was uh, I was actually a sales rep at the time for um, Coast Music in Montreal. My oh. territory was actually Ontario, and uh, we were doing. Um, Sonar drum clinic, sonar, uh, so, sonar, Vic Firth. I don't remember all the brands, but it was mm -hmm. with Steve Smith. So okay. I, he was going to be playing with a tablet player. And, um, you, you know, he wasn't going to be using drumsticks to play along with a tablet player. This is oh. when he was doing his uh, vital information stuff. So he right. was playing quiet, right. well, not the journey stuff. And so he was doing all the Indian. Uh, tabla, mm -hmm. palas, and stuff like that. And uh, 
So I knew this and I just designed this. So I had to pick up Steve from his hotel, he hopped in the car, he said, hey, Steve, check these out. He played them on the dash and said, oh my God, these are fantastic. I'm going to use them tonight. Cool. So that's that's how this was developed. It's, um, I, I was walking around the store trying to figure out how to get the hot rod to have more bounce. And I ended mm-hmm. up putting the foam core in the middle. I don't know if you can see that. Right. Okay. Yes, now we can see so, it. So basically that compresses and opens and it opens it up. Yeah. Helps protect the, the dowels at lower volume or at any volume really. And it gives you the bounce. And it's also mm-hmm. a lot quieter. So Steve played them. We tweaked them a bit. And then uh, took about six months. And then they went into fixed catalog. Cool. For for eight, 16 years. Cool. And then it just so happened when I stopped being a co-sales rep, uh, Vic had been purchased by Zildjian and things changed. And right, 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 right. Decided right. to uh, make some changes in their lineup. And then so it went back into my catalog as the Stingers. Okay, okay. So they're still available for guys that love this model. Nice. But the fun story about this is, uh, I had given the full exclusive that no one would get the foam. So I had to come up with a design for my own self to put in the Headhunters lineup. And so I came up with the the doobies and the spliffs and it started having fun with the names. Okay. <laughs> you were mentioning that the other day you were getting a kick out of that. But uh, so the, the idea behind the these are these are these a doobies? Yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Uh, that's 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 a really cool idea. I'm I'm excited to to show this. So, I was trying to figure out how to get the stick to rebound faster. So we did the same idea where we took. I don't know if you could see that. Yeah, and that's what's so it's got a crisscross. Yeah, and see how it compresses. Mm-hmm. So it compresses. We we. Uh, Cut it down to about there, double cut it. So basically, it's just like another couple small dowels in there. there <clears throat> and then it, it compresses and it gives you the rebound at that lower volume. They're a little louder than the stingers, but mm. uh, I was explaining it to someone and I said, We spliff the uh, center dowel. And he starts laughing at the name spliff because it was a. Uh, I meant to say we split, but I said we spliff, and <laughs> so we came up with spliffs. <laughs> so so there's a single <laughs> single spliff, and then or a single cut, and then the double one is the doobies. <laughs> and now now we have a slatted bamboo one called blunts. Oh, so the blunts are the same idea: bigger dowel and flat flat. Uh, Bamboo dowels around okay, the other side. Just a little bit to, to the uh, side. I can't see it actually. No, the other side. There you go. No, that was, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So that's a bigger dowel. Uh, these are a little louder. Uh, these are a little quieter. And these are yeah. the quietest. And quietest. then you have the stingers that are the quietest. The quietest. Okay. That's what Which that's the speaks to that idea that, like, when people say, why do you have so many? Because they all fit into a range and they all do something different than the next one mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's just like drumsticks like a guy say oh, I, I i only use five a's like uh seven a's too small for me i can't play it and then you have another guy who says i can only play seven a's that's it so mm. it speaks to the whole idea that why do you why not have a, a right, lot right. of different choices than this no exactly no, exactly. That makes sense because, you know, why stick to one thing when you can have a different sound, a same symbol, but a different sound with a different something that you're hitting it to create yeah. a different sound. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'm curious, how many, how many trial and errors did, <laughs> did it take you to get to those? To the... Lots. <laughs> yeah, lots. There's a lot of stuff went in the dumpster. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. He's like, yeah. no, that broke or no, oh, that didn't work yeah. or. Yeah, no, I, I kept a lot of my ideas, the prototypes, the original prototypes, just for posterity, just for so that years from now I can go, oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> That's how I came up with that. Uh, well, very <laughs> that cool. That didn't work, but that did. 
<laughs> yeah. Actually, um, from from that idea, we one thing that I noticed that's missing in all bundled rods is that mm -hmm. clear bell definition. You're playing, okay. you go to play on the bell. So, you know, even my models, right? When you hit that banded area on a bell of a symbol, doesn't yeah. It it's it sounds okay. And it works and it's what people have been doing. So what I wanted was even more definition there. And I wanted to be able to do a rim shot or I wanted to be able to cross stick. So with a, with a ball. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So I came up with this idea. These are one of my faves. So from here. Oh, it's a hybrid. Is that okay. fitting in the camera? Okay. Uh, so from here to here, this is turned on a lathe. So then we drill a hole down to here, and that enlarged area there, that's solid wood. Okay, so the bottom is solid wood and the top is solid, solid wood. Bottom. Okay. And these are these are uh, bamboo dowels with the skin still intact. Just a bit to the other side, to, to you, I believe okay. to your right, you go. yes. So those bamboo dowels uh, have the skin intact, and that's where bamboo gets its strength from. If oh. you remove the skin off the bamboo, it's just a little bit stronger than, say, a birch dowel. But mm -hmm. you leave the skin on, and it's well. In China, they build scaffolding out of bamboo. Do, yeah, yeah, no, for yeah. sure. So it's incredibly strong. So guys that are complaining about why well, break, I break uh, all that stuff, right? I go, I go to trade shows and I start showing my stuff to guys, and they'll show pull these out and say, "Oh no, I already have those." Well, how long have you had them? Oh, two years. So, so they last like crazy. And and you can play a rim shot with them because this mm. is solid wood. And when you, you come down and hit the rim shot, the enlarged area hits the drum. So it's taking the impact. Mm. When you go and play on the bell of the cymbal, that's your target zone. Mm. So now you're going to get a really decent. So now you've just increased the dynamic range of, of a bundled rod almost up to the level of a drumstick. Of a drumstick so you can still yeah. play quiet. You got this short span here. They bounce like crazy. So you could do all your double stroke, all your finesse work at low mm. volumes. It's not going to impede on that at all. And then you can really wail when you need to. So this, these are great. So well, we have yeah. seven, diff seven different crossover models. From no, that's that's really, no, no, I was gonna say, that, that is really interesting. Go, sorry, go ahead, finish, finish. Uh, yeah. What's your, your idea? Sorry, no, no, there's just uh, we have some with plastic in the end, some with uh, nylon sleeves. Um, so you get symbol definition. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of different ones, <laughs> and, then, and then because I mentioned this is a solid wood area, we actually will mount a tambourine right tambourine jingle there, so you can get that sound as well. I think I saw that in the catalog. Yeah, exactly. Some yeah. sort of uh, castanet or whatever it was, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun. <laughs> so, so, so basically you're just, you're just, you're going with a different idea and how do I achieve that idea? And that's when, okay, if I do this, I mix this with that. That's how your, that's your creation process. I imagine. Yeah. And that, that crossover one uh, really took a long time to get. Hmm. Uh, it went through a lot of changes, and like the first time we made it, we had to regrind the knife, start over again. Oh, okay. Finally nailed it. Realized that the key to making that idea work was having that enlarged area, hmm. because if you don't create a zone where that drumstick naturally comes down, and that's where you hit when you're going for the volume, where mm -hmm. you're going to go and play on the bell of your cymbal everything falls apart hmm. You're, hmm. you will break stuff yeah so or if, even... if you give the drummer an area I'll go oh that's what that's for bang 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 and get it right away it works <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about we don't do that <laughs> <laughs> yes <Yeah. Not> at <laughs> all. yes we do that no but that's interesting so 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 basically yeah and it kind of speaks to what you do and what i saw at drum fest which is sort of well how do we attain that sound 
because often exactly I've, I've had bundles i've broken bundles yeah. and i've had that problem well i've got bundles it's quiet i want just a bit more attack but i can't turn the bundle away to just do a little rim shot for that you know that ballad or whatever or yeah. i can't you know, so yeah, this is where... pick up a pair of sticks quick go over throw them back yeah. down yeah. yeah so so it's very very interesting very cool so that's your hybrid uh section if you will yeah yeah and then and we created the Sorry. the brush the brush i believe is it, is it that where you're going yeah well yeah brush <laughs> the brushes are fun um I used to have somebody else manufacture my brushes for me. Okay. And um, uh, when I came up with the designs of those, um, it's the same thing. I, I I stopped in one time, and he had a, a non-retractable brush. Okay. And I so I didn't know you made those. And he said, oh, yeah, we make those. And I, he said, oh, those were all made for somebody else, but they canceled the order. So I said, well, I'll take them all. So I, I took them all and um, uh, I started messing around with them and drilling holes in the tubes and sticking stuff in them and uh, came up with uh, my first hybrid brush. And I, I flipped, I, lo I loved them so much. And then we started, <laughs> what we were doing was, uh, let's see if I can find a tube. Nah, you know what? I'll start rummaging. I'll never find it. <laughs> I can show you here. Uh, this right here. This was my first design in a hybrid brush. Oh, cool. Um, it's removable. So you got a polycarbonate rod with a bead on it. Okay. This is the standard brush, non-retractable. So what we did was we put a slot in the tube. In the tube, okay. Uh, hang on. Yeah, Wait, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we slit the rubber and then stick in the tube and you run. It was that simple. And then you roll up your O ring to hold it in place. And you could position this all the way out. So it's way, way out. You get a really cool clip clop sound because when you hit, the bead comes down and hits. Mm -hmm. You can turn it sideways and do a rim shot. You can turn it over this side and you get a more pronounced sound. You can play the bell. It's just so versatile. And you can still play all your traditional brushes. And if yeah, you, you thought it was, yeah, what's that? You can do this. Yeah, if you stuff. thought it was all baloney, you can just take it apart. <laughs> just have a regular brush. brush. Yeah. So this, this was um, my first idea for a, a hybrid brush, the cycle. We nice. called it a cyclops because of the one eye. It looks like one eye. One eye. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, and sorry. No, go go ahead. And there's uh, there's other variations of that. The one I saw yeah. was one with the the sort of circular sort of yeah. Uh, so that 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 progressed. Uh, we came up with a slot on either side, and then you could put two rods in. So this was the first idea in that. I don't know if you can see the rods there. To, to the to the other side, a bit a bit more yeah. to the other side. Oh, we can't. There we go. Yes. So once a black rod, once a white rod, you could take them right out like this. So when you play, you're gonna get the click sound. Play your play your symbol. You're gonna get some tone. You can remove them. You can slide them right back to get them right out of the way like that. So it's, this is a really cool idea. So when we first started making these, mm -hmm. we call them sa uh, saber tooth because they're kind of like the two teeth of a right. tiger. And then I was assembling them one day and I thought I was cutting the nylon and I decided I would carry the hoop right over. Mm. I flipped. <laughs> like it was just a fluke. I put it together, went and played them, and I went, holy crap. These are great. And the first trade show I took them to, guys were actually hugging me. Because <laughs> I, I was doing it in uh, uh, the, well, in the second trade show. We went down to the Nashville right. trade show. It's a country okay. town, right? And, well, 
it's every kind of town there now. Like it's it's a music. It's, it's the, yeah, it's it's, it's pretty. You much got the same. West Coast, you got the East Coast, and you got Nashville. Real, yeah. And there's a tremendous amount of drum business there, mm -hmm. and uh, guys were freaking because they do train beats, and you get mm -hmm. the definition. You know, get a big fat back beat. You can flip it over and play the hoop side down. Play onto your cymbal. You get all your sounds you want. I'll show you a pair. Sure. So far, this is going to be an expensive, uh, an expensive episode. I'm going to go back on the website once I'm finished. <laughs> <laughs> so th these are the. There's three models of the Dreamcatchers. There's the, the, the original. I got all three here. So this was the original. It was a nylon hoop. Okay. So there we go. And the, the hoop's adjustable in size. So you could take it right out. And what it does, the when a guy lays into the snare drum for the two and four or whatever he's doing, you're going to get a big fat back beat because right. the hoop will compress. And actually, the hoop gives you more rebound too because oh. you're, you're shortening the length of the wires. Right. So if you're doing all the push pull, like that type of stuff, right, right, right. See that? Oh, the most of the, there, yeah. There so there all the push pull stuff, it's actually easier because you got a hoop there. Because hmm. you shorten the length of the the um, wire filament, hmm. works better. So that was the first one, and then I decided I'd make one with a little more flex to it. Okay. So this is a. Uh, braided stainless steel with a nylon coating. So these are a lot louder and they probably weigh maybe five to 10 grams more than these. Hmm. So a, a rock guy, these are fantastic. Or if you're playing, if you have to play loud with brushes, but you still want the brush sound. The brush sound yeah. So you're doing a big fat train beat and you gotta hit harder, fantastic. So again, you can play the hoop down, you can play it up. When you go onto the cymbal, you get a pink. You actually get a ping sound, no mm. wash, no nothing. But if right. you want the wash, you just change the angle of attack. Mm. So you just come in on the brushes. You want to get the ping, lower it. Go for the lower, right? right. It's really easy. Mm. And then, go ahead, go ahead, finish with the third one. Oh, my my last one is uh, the the REM. So it was the the dream catchers. A play on the words REM, you know, rapid eye movement. It's a yeah, uh, stage of sleep. So the whole idea with the dream catchers was the indigenous idea of dream catchers, catching mm -hmm. your dreams, mm -hmm. which is what we're all doing as drummers, right? <laughs> and and the whole the whole sound. And uh, so the dream catchers, the wired, so you're completely wired, and then the REM which is uh, the REM, the rapid eye movement idea. And then this one has got two smaller hoops. We, we made it fun with one's black, one's white. And then you can sandwich the wire filaments. So you can put the hoops on both sides. Oh. So you can, yeah. This one's a sleeper, like, pardon the pun. But uh, <laughs> when guys do find out about this one, they love it because you can, you can take one hoop out you can do this so you can have one big just, one small just a bit more to the other side just no a bit more there you go yes <laughs> so you can have one hoop big one hoop small and then you right. can also do this so you can compress the wires in between there, oh there you go so and i imagine this one yeah yeah this one you can actually play a one-handed roll with on your drum you know how <laughs> yes you know how guys do the thing on the edge of the rim where they go right, right, right. okay this one, you can actually do it in the center of the drum just by uh, compressing down like this, hitting it to the drum like that. It's like I was demoing that at the drum fest. You guys are going, that's just crazy. Because you <laughs> you could, I can't play with my left hand because of my broken arm. I don't know. Is that in the mirror? Is that in the screen? We, 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 that's uh, not yeah. my bicep. <laughs> <laughs> you heard about that my sympathies yeah 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 that's anyways the uh i'm getting it fixed uh next 
Not this Saturday, the following Saturday. I get it pinned. Yes, thank you. Anyways, this is a, a fun thing because you could actually, you could play your beat and then you could play rolls with your left hand. Hmm. Once you, like anything, you know, you practice it, work on a yeah. technique, yeah. you can turn it into your own thing, right? So, so this is so yeah so again i mean it, we could go on and on because we've only touched like i think half of the stuff that <laughs> that you make <laughs> yeah. but again it, i guess the ideas are you have an idea you try to get the sound and basically that's where the sort of the juices flow and that's when you you know trial and error and sort of do stuff uh create the stuff that you're, you're showing us yeah and and you have to sort of not be afraid to be silly yeah because you come up with some ideas, <clears throat> people just, you know, ah, that's ridiculous, right? But then mm -hmm. another person comes along and goes, no, it's not, it's great. So you just have to not be afraid to put it out there. It's probably like, it's like playing drums, right? If, you're, if you don't go and do it, it's not gonna happen. Yeah, no, exactly, you know, there's no other way to do it than just, you know, do it basically, and you know, instead of just dreaming about it, yeah. Very cool. I know you got uh, tons of other stuff. I, I'm going to, you know, implore you guys to, to go check out the website. Uh, what I'm curious about is, is you have, you know, uh, artists that use your stuff. What's the coolest or funnest thing you saw people using your stuff? How do they use it? What do they come back with it? Uh, is there something that someone did? You're like, I hadn't thought of that, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. Um, I had come up with this idea of, uh, I have a flat stick series. I can I can quickly show you, but what sure. um, I come up with a, uh, a, a thing called a wrap slapper, and you play you can play it in the air, you can play it on your kit, and you can incorporate. I'm going to get them. <laughs> <laughs> one, one last show and tell. <laughs> yeah. So, one fella. Uh, had a pair of these. Uh, actually, it was uh, Sean Pelton who played. Oh, nice! Yes, with Saturday Night Live. Live. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, he does that show. He had a pair of these. Can you hear that? Yeah. So, so you can no, play him not, in the air, like. Yeah, you're not hitting anything right now. You're just hitting in no, the air. No, no, I'm not hitting anything. But you yeah. could take that, incorporate it into what you're playing on the drum set. So you play. So I'm I'm hitting my hi, I'm pretending I'm hitting my hi hat at two and four, and you yeah. can still play on the the upper edge. Upper, oh, you don't have to. You don't hit it on the. You can hit it on the flat, or you can hit it on the vertical edge, right? Mm -hmm. To get more sound, and then you can start incorporating this. It's really cool for um, sambas and stuff like that off your oh, hi hat. Yeah. All right. So. so this uh, Sean Pelton had a pair, and he called me, and he he wanted to know if I could make them louder and deeper. <laughs> okay, so I came up with these. Challenge accepted. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So these are wood ones. Yeah. Okay. And uh, that's I put a clear skin on it. That's polycarbonate, so it won't break. And that's uh, normally I use maple, but I. This is oak on this one. Okay. But oh yeah, a lot louder. So somehow another guy, Jay Belarus, who oh, he's Isabel. the type of guy that doesn't endorse anything, but he's a, he's a really nice guy. And uh, one of uh, our artists, uh, Chris Barsack, was studying with him, and he pulled these out of his et out of his uh, stick bag when he was watching Jay play live. And Jay was playing a jazz gig. And he gave them to him. Jay went up and played a jazz standard with these things. With these th <laughs> and there's a, there's a video of it online. And it's like, what? And the bass player's playing away like this, turning around and laughing and going, this is great. I can't believe this. Because the sounds that he was coming up, you, you, you couldn't do it with a pair of drumsticks. Mm. So he was adding 
this whole flair, flavor and color to the music that was just great. I can, really yeah, good. I can imagine. I can imagine you can swing them or something if you play them a certain way. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and there's uh, I've seen some really cool. There's if you, uh, I'm pretty sure if you Google or you go to YouTube and Google drum claps, there's some guys that've done some stuff. With them. Very nice. So cool. Well, thank you for showing you everything. Uh, yeah. Quickly, a few last questions. Uh, so you have artists like Jim Keltner and, and Graham Lear and Billy Ward. Did they come to you? Did, did, how did that, uh, those collaborations with artists normally, how does that work out? Um, for With Jim Keltner, um, one of the guys that owns a drum magazine, um, Jonathan Mover, had seen right. all my stuff and he's going, and it's interesting too, when I was doing the NAM show, everybody was asking me, has Jim Keltner seen this stuff? And I'm going, no, I don't, I, I don't know. I don't have a clue. And how would I know, how would you even approach a guy like Approach Jim, yeah. Yeah. So Jonathan said, Dave, send me a box of stuff, whatever you think, and I will take it to his house. So oh, he nice. did. And then um, I guess. I was, I forgot all about it because you, you know, this type of stuff happens all the time where you, you do this type of stuff and you never hear from the guy again. Right. right, right and right. I guess about six months go by and I'm going home for dinner, walking the, the door and my wife's got the phone like this. It's Jim Keltner. I'll put your dinner in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we talked for about an hour on the phone and oh, he nice. was just a great guy. He loves all this stuff. And um, I basically, we just talked about drumming and I s sounds and playing drums and this and that. And then I said, okay, can I do my sales pitch now? And he <laughs> said, yeah, lay it on me. So I just said, explain to him that we have Headhunter Sticks and Headhunter's Creations. Uh -huh. And I'm not asking you anything about Sticks, but I'm asking you if you would consider endorsing the creation side yes I said yeah hmm. no problem that's it it's Very that cool. easy and so from that perspective and i actually a few guys that i know that do marketing suggested to me that that would be the approach because headhunters will probably never dethrone vic promark vader mm -hmm. these mm -hmm. guys are all jockeying for number one number two three spot all the time mm -hmm. and they're international brands that everybody knows if mm -hmm. you're a drummer so what aren't they doing is over here all the stuff that i'm doing, you're doing so exactly. i can easily say that we're i could say it and it actually might be true we're the number one alternative hmm. to these guys because we have all these other interesting ideas that they don't do and they don't want to do mm -hmm. because it's a pain in the ass <laughs> <laughs> well, from, from your description yeah it, it seems to be yeah, no it's a lot of work it takes a long time to get to that end result i mean you showed us a great deal of things but i i imagine there's a lot of hours of trial of error and error of of what you've shown us basically so the ideas of the two different things if a guy really loves all our creation stuff and he's say um i don't know a zildjian guy mm -hmm. he plays he's endorsing zildjian and whatnot it's not a stretch for him to go, you know what? I, I want to endorse Head of Creations because I love all that stuff. And that's why if you look at our website, it's divided. Like it really is divided. There's Headhunters uh, artists and there's Creations artists. Mm -hmm. And we do have on the website, there's a um, uh, an application. If anybody wants to do it or they just follow me and talk to me. Yeah, no, exactly. That's one of the things I was I thought that was cool is that there's an actual application for, you know, someone like me or somebody else who wants to use them to reach out and say, you know, I'd love to try your, you know, to be to be a, an artist from from you, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. It's helpful. It's easier because you can't vet like some people will look at the application and go, you know, it's hard to vet and, and disappoint people. It's one of the hardest things to do is to say I don't want any more artists or you want to bring somebody on. 
there has to be value and it has to be a two-way street and it makes sense for both parties mm -hmm. yeah. and and quickly to just to wrap up everything um if somebody has an idea can they come up to you and say dave do you want to try this idea and then like you know like the sean pelton thing and 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 then you work with them or how is that something that's possible? uh you know what i am really reluctant to do that okay because it's really easy to disappoint people mm. and um, how do I put this? Like, I'm a pretty wacky guy. So, <laughs> at some point or another, I Believe probably you. thought of, I thought of something. And like, sometimes some people will mention to me just innocently, and I'll think about it and I'll go rummage around. Well, yeah, I've already tried that. Tried it, yeah. yeah. So, but basically, if I if I've already got something half done half baked let's say it's half baked mm. but it only needs a little bit more to tweak it into something uh, it, it's like it's not entirely out of sight out of mind for me it's something that i i go oh one day i'm gonna get i'm gonna get back to that mm -hmm. so if someone comes along and says you know what about this idea and i'm going yeah it's so close to what i was already doing and I was, I wish you hadn't said anything to me about it. Because <laughs> now the idea is stuck in. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, because now am I am I taking his idea or am mm. I, and actually, you know, this is a true story. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 1984, it, it, how, how long have you been playing drums? Oh, it's uh, 91, yeah. 91, okay. Uh, you probably, you won't remember this, so. Back in the 80s, in the early 1980s, there was a thing called a Tama X hi-hat. Okay. So it was a stationary hi-hat. It didn't open and close, and it went on a multi-clamp, and you could put it anywhere on your drum set. So there was no cable yet. Okay. So, so this is 1983 that they came out with those, and somewhere around 1984, 80, yeah, it was 1984. One of, I, I was in retail. One of my customers came in and said, I got an idea. And so, okay, shoot. And he says, I got an X hi hat, but what would be so cool if we connected a cable and you could turn it in, you could make it work. And I said, well, you can, we can do that. But if you, um, if you, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what to go and buy and I'll make it. So I did it. First one I made worked perfect. Hmm. And I, I gave it to some really heavy guys. And they said, Dave, it works perfect. So it was coming up to June. So I phoned Remo. And back then, uh, Remo uh, used to make ha have hardware. Because back, do you remember hmm. when he had drums, acoustic drum sets? I do remember. His acoustic I, on stuff and that. So he had to have hardware with all that stuff. Right. And I do remember in the so, 90s, they, they, I think they there was something at some point that they came back or, yeah. I'm not sure. But, but anyways. Yeah. The um, there was a company called Reliance International that made everybody's drum hardware in Taiwan, and mm. so I was using uh, this. There was this huge telescopic boom stand that used to be available, <laughs> and I took it all apart and I used that to hold the hi hat, and then I used the hi hat. I retapped all the threads and connected a motorcycle reflex cable, and it all, right. all it all worked perfectly. So then I said, well, you know what? Nobody's come up with this yet. So I'm going to phone up Remo and ask him if he'd sign a non-disclosure. And Remo said exactly to me what I said to you about other people giving you ideas. He we said, Dave, I won't sign a non-disclosure. And I said, okay, why? And he said, uh, because I've got a team of guys and me that are constantly coming up with ideas. So if I sit, sign a non-disclosure, you come and show me something that's so similar to something that I'm doing already, mm. then I basically euchred myself. So I don't do it. I won't sign it. Mm. If, you if you trust me and want to bring it down, show it to me, I'll look at it. Mm. So I did. I showed it to him. And eventually... I had cables came to be, as you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I had nothing to do with uh, 
I don't know what uh, what to what extent I had to do with propelling that whole idea, mm. but um, I came up with that idea in '84. And the only reason why I told you that was because a guy like uh, Remo w- wouldn't sign a non-disclosure mm. back in 1984, and I feel like uh, that's I should take a page out of that to just be careful. Mm. I think you have to almost. You have to be really careful about uh, people giving you ideas because they, they really, people really think they gave you the idea. Hmm. No, no. I, and I, and I understand what you're coming from. I, I, you know, I, I came into a percussion group two years into them already having created a show and I would, you know, I was a new kid. And I was like, Oh, we should try this. And both of the guys were like, we've tried that. <laughs> it doesn't work. Yeah. You know, yeah, so oh, there you we go. do that. So, 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 yeah, I understand where where you're coming from, um, but also it would be interesting. Yeah, I, I understand a whole bit, but sometimes, yeah, it, it can sort of give you that motivation, I guess, to continue an idea that you already had started, as you say. And it's sort of interesting because it goes to show to your creation side where it's just uh, that some ideas are still in progress, if you will. In progress, in yeah. I, 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 I will preface. The conversation, if someone says something like that to me, I will preface it by not giving a long-winded story like I just did with you. (laughs) But I I will basically shorten that down to the point where they'll understand where where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. But then I'll I'll say, if you still feel comfortable telling me about what your idea is, that's a different story. Mm, And I can tell you within... if I thought of it hmm. and you just have to believe me. <laughs> that's basically, <laughs> that's the only thing I can say to someone. Like someone came up with a, a wacky new brush design that I don't know, played itself. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Right. Okay. You can and they that. wanted to tell me about it. That's a different story. Hmm. Hmm. I, I have other prototype brushes that I didn't even bother showing you because they're prototypes. You don't want to, yeah. You don't want to give. Them yeah, I don't want to. I don't want anybody to see them. <laughs> so well, until I, until I source all the individual components, so that I get them down to the price point where you can assemble it, make it, and it'll still be at the price point to the cons- consumer that they'll go. I'll pay for that. Right, right. So that's the like that's one of the steps you have to do when you create a and, product. Yeah. You have to work from okay. What's the street price? What will uh, what does the retailer need to make? What does the distributor need to make? Mm-hmm. What can I manufacture it for? What's my cost? Do all of those elements fall into place? If they fall into place, green light. Mm-hmm. If they don't, red light. Mm-hmm. Back to the drawing board. You got to work work on it. Thank you. Yes, that that was one of my main question. How you know how long does it take to get from like I was saying, like from that idea to the creation to oh, it's actually in the in the store. So thanks for ans- answering that. It's it's interesting yeah. okay. for sure. Um, <laughs> so quickly, uh, website is I believe uh, headstick uh, head hunter sticks and creation dot com. I believe. Yeah, okay. Exactly. And yes. uh, if There's two some... S's in headhunters sticks sticks and creations dot com. Cool. And, uh, and and our, our Facebook page is uh, Headhunters Canada, and our, our um, uh, Instagram is Headhunters S and C. Okay, our S for Six and Creation makes sense. Yeah. Very nice. Well, thank you so much for showing us all that stuff. I mean, there's a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I, I really appreciate you asking me to come on. It was really nice. <laughs> and and I hope uh, more ideas come out because uh, they're really interesting. And I'm really interested to try out some of your creation stuff. I'm sure some of us uh, for it. listening have, have gotten some ideas with uh, with the show. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so, thanks, so thanks so much, Dave. Uh, again, you can reach Dave if ever you uh, want to uh, pursue the sticks or have ideas or want to be part of the artists. And uh, well, thanks so much, Dave. And I, I wish you all the best on that arm uh, oh, yeah. operation. I, I wish can you heart, I 
I can hardly wait to get this baby fixed. Yeah. Being being a, a percussionist, I imagine it's quite difficult to not be able to. No, to, I, to I can't use. I can't. At the trade show, guys would want to see the brushes being played. Mm. I can't do a circle with my left hand. Oh man, yeah. Ouch. <laughs> So, so, so I wish you all, I have you, you know, send you all my best wishes and prompt recovery yeah. on that. Thanks. Thanks very much. And thanks for having me on as a guest. Really appreciate it. No problem. Have a good night and uh, okay. take care of yourself. Yeah. Good night. Ciao. So there you go. That was Dave Rundle from Headhunters uh, Sticks and Creation. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, come back next week for another John Fields Cafe episode. Until then, take care and all the best. Ciao, ciao.